So this is the new Nortent Vern 1. Complete departure from the original Vern 1, which I had. Um, much more robust tent. It's a three pole tent. It's heavier as well, almost a kilo heavier. Um, bit of a bomb shelter. You'll see it's a nice structure, four crossing points of the poles, one at each end, two on the top. Now since it was launched, it said on the website that they weren't available till the 25th of February. Um, I actually ordered mine on the 30th of January and it arrived on the 12th of February. So I think Norton have just made a mistake on their website uh, because they are available. They've been available for just over two weeks now. It comes in, I think I paid without a footprint. I didn't get the footprint. I always get mine from uh, Lucy Quint and the Quincraft. I think they're the best footprints you can get. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and her her company makes footprints and bags and all kinds of good stuff. Um, <coughs> so I'm just waiting for that to arrive. Now a lot of people are saying that the Norton Vern 1 is a competitor for the Hilleberg Sulo. So I decided to put my Sulo up next to it. This is a Sulo Red Label. Um, the one I think you can probably most compare it to. Now, there are some similarities, there are some differences. The Sulo, again, is a three pole tent, but it all cross over the center. Three crossing points, one, two, three, and triangle. So, it's renowned as being a very, very solid tent. You can also get the black label, which is heavier, but it has thicker poles, stronger um, curl on material. Um, but yeah, so, the thing with this one is, it's half the price of this one. So that's the thing that really, I suppose, makes it a competitor. Now, first thing you notice in terms of the tents themselves, the Vern one is longer. Um, I think it's 260 to the outside dimensions. I believe the Sulo is 240. The interior space is therefore longer. With the Sulo, you have the foot end, you can see there, the foot end is narrower than the head end. With the Vern 1, it's the same, the symmetrical. Um, the Vern 1 is wider through the centre. I believe it's, it's about 125. You have got an adjuster here, so you can unclip this. To move this back, if you want a bigger vestibule space. But, in fairness, the vestibule is already... 65 centimeters it's massive and with these center tie outs on the on the, the walls you can pull this further out make it even bigger so you've got acres of space in there you have more pockets inside there's um six pockets i believe two of the back wall one at each end and one's further up you also have internal ventilation that little flap zips down and that's at both ends to allow ventilation through the inside of the tent. Now you can only zip down the inner part and then there's a mesh there so none of the midges are going to get in. In terms of other ventilation on the Vern 1, you have this canopy vent above this door and there is two doors on this side, it's worth noting, which is a nice feature of this so depending upon the wind direction, you can have the whole side opened up, have this side if the wind's coming this way, close that side if it's coming that way. You can roll the outer doors back. We, they also have fitted them with clips. So you can clip it to the pole. When it's right open, you can clip it to the back pole on this one, clip it to the front pole, and then you can zip down. He says with one hand. And if you peg this out here as well, you've got some protection there. Um, I personally would have liked to have seen this over this door as well. The original Vern one had that. Um, I'm not sure why they've gone with just the one canopy, but I'm sure the designers have their reasons. The other ventilation you have on the, the Vern one is down here. And there's mesh inside there. Now this clip, when you put this guy out, obviously you wrap this around there for stability. And this clips to the guy line and holds that vent open. What you could do, if you guide that closer to the ground or you can easily stick a little bit of cord in a peg and pull that down if you wanted to close it peg it here peg it there that would be uh, 
just as easy. As I say here, you can wrap these around the pole for extra stability on the poles. You know, whichever way you want to do it. And peg it out. You can go around as many times as you want. There's, there's plenty of material there. So you can get that tight. I'll, I'll figure that one out when I get it pitched. I'm, I'm going to be using this tent at the weekend, so I'm going to try it out. But as I said, the reason I wanted to pitch it in the garden, um, I wanted to put it next to the Sulo. The Sulo is, we all know, is a solid tent. Hilleberg tents are renowned, solid, reliable. You know, they stand up to pretty good conditions. Now, the differences in, in terms of ventilation with the Sulo, you've got this cover and there's a mesh vents under there that this covers over. There's no other ventilation low down in this. It's all high up. It's, it's, it, it, they're both four season tents. Um, as I say, the Sulo has less ventilation options. Um, you can open the top of the door here and you're still protected by the, the cap. Um, again, pegging points. They've, they're on the mesh so you can wrap them around the poles and peg out so you're taking the stress off the actual uh, fly sheet now they both use 9mm poles the Hillybergs as we all know are duck feather lights the Vern 1 uses 7000 series aluminium poles now are they as strong as duck feather lights? I doubt it well they're, they're not um, the configuration is such that I think it will be still a very strong tent but is it as strong as a, a Hilleberg Sulo? Remains to be seen. Like I say, I'm going out this weekend. It doesn't promise to be too bad conditions in fairness, but I think maximum 22 gusts, but mostly around 10 mile an hour winds are predicted, so can't see it being a big problem. Height-wise, the Sulo is slightly taller than the Vern 1 inside, I think two centimeters. Um, when you're sat on your mat, that can be a bit of a difference, but not significant. Uh, as I say, it's longer when you've got a big wide mat in there in the Vern 1. You've still got probably 30 centimetres of room, um, foot or head, end, eh, head or foot end for storage. You've also got the space at the side for storage. And it is, as I say, it's actually significantly bigger than inside the Sulo. The Sulo vestibule is, I believe, 55 centimetres or 45. And as I say, the Vern 1 is 65 and you can extend that. So those features on the Vern 1, I think, are... Well, they're better than the, the Sulo. Um, weight, very similar. The Vern 1, I believe, is about 200, maybe 250 grams heavier. Um, which, if you're carrying a Sulo, you're not going to be that bothered about an extra 250 grams, I wouldn't have thought. Um, now, in terms of the construction, Vern, uh, well, Nortent, I think, they've taken design cues from uh, Hilleberg. I mean, if you look, the pole sleeves, you've got the the softer material here then the heavy duty almost rubberized material at the bottom on the Sulo exactly the same except on this one I, th I would say that this material here it, it feels stronger than the material here as I say the, the guy out on tabs again the Sulo they're bigger tabs are they stronger don't know the Vern one also has um, illuminous tie outs um, or guy runners whatever you want to call them the clips that hold the fly to the poles the ones on the Sulo look to be a little bit more robust but I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these ones they, they seem pretty good clips compared to some that I've, I've seen on tents um, quite easy to connect as you see on the Sulo ones they're a bit wider they feel a little bit firmer uh, does that make them better? Time will tell. Also, what they've done on the Vern, they've followed the same system for spreading the load. So instead of being point loaded on the fly at each clip, they've got this rubberized material again, the same as the material here, all the way along the seams, and that spreads the, the tension along the entire seam line. Hilleberg do exactly the same. Now, in terms of the materials, Hilleberg used their um, trademark Curlon. Uh, on this, the red label, it's Curlon 1200, I believe. Curlon is essentially a silk nylon. Let's, let's be 
you know, realistic about it. It's just the one that they've developed themselves. On the Vern 1, it's a 30 diesel nylon. Now, I have read that this 30 diesel nylon has a tear resistance of 1.6 kilograms, eh, sorry, 16 kilograms. So that would essentially be like a curl on 1600, effectively. You're getting into black label territory, which is curl on 1800, which has 18 kilograms of tear resistance. It's also, the black label is the same weight. The difference there though is the black label has 10 millimeter dark feather light poles. So if you put 10 millimeter DACs on this Vern 1, have you got a competitor, the black label? I still doubt it because the black label is an outstanding tent. The red label is easily enough for the vast majority of conditions you'll come across. Um, but yeah, I've wanted this tent for a while. The North Tent originally launched the Vern 1 PC um, towards the end of last year. That seemed pretty popular. It's a poly cotton, exactly the same shape as this. It's a single skin tent, that one. Um, it's a chunk heavier, but I didn't, didn't really want a poly cotton tent. And so I did email the uh, North Tent and I sent them messages on their social media. I kind of pestered them a bit, to be honest. Um, and then when they brought out the Vern 2, with a, a different design because the original Vern 2 looked very much like a, an extended Vern 1 they've then launched this one and I'm over the moon the half because I've wanted this tent for ages well since the PC came out um, and it's interesting I've seen a few videos on YouTube already about the Vern 1 um, some of the information on them has been incorrect especially in terms of the availability date um, they were available to everyone on the 30th of January. So people saying they're not available the 25th of February are wrong. It's not the case. It may be that it was just the first batch and they're now sold out. I haven't checked because I got mine. I didn't need to check again. Um, so it, it could very well be that. But uh, don't really care much. Uh, like I say, I've got it now. So hopefully I'll be able to get out this weekend in the new Vern one. I mean, it's got a nice big uh, storm covers here and they're attached to the, the tensioner line that runs across the side of the tent. Now, on, I think it was Fellman Dave had a video. I'll put a link to his on uh, on YouTube. And what he did was, because the one thing they haven't done with the Vern 1 is they haven't put um, clips to stop zip creep. This here, these are the clips for the ground sheet for the, the, the footprint. But what Feldman Dave did is he clipped these bottom clips that go on there onto these, onto the interior tensioner. And when that's zipped down, that holds it pretty firmly. So he's basically made use of a, a, an existing feature to double as another feature, which was a really good idea, I thought. As I say, I'll, I'll do a link to his. There's also um, Andrew Park, Park Outdoors, I think it is. Uh, he's got a video up as well um, in my opinion they're the two best review videos um, the two of the best reviewers to be honest there's a lot of the other ones I wouldn't I wouldn't give any time to because the corporate chills will just tell you what the latest company wants you to say wants them to say so um, as I see a film the, the links I'll put in I'll put in the, the link for Lucy Quinton for the ground sheets and as I say she does like insulator bags roll top bags little these uh, lantern bag things um the quality is really good outstanding in fact i mean the the, the sulo i've got the sulo put up it's on one of lucy's uh, ground sheets um and the material is outstanding you know she'll make them to fit any she, she's got on the list on her website with different um common tents um and she'll also make them to fit any other tent because obviously this tent wasn't out when I ordered the footprint from her. Uh, so she just gets the dimensions from the manufacturer and, and goes from there. But yeah, her footprints are outstanding. So I'll put the link in for, for Lucy. Uh, it's quintcraft.co.uk, I believe. And I'll also put the link in for Felman Dave and Andrew Park. Um, so yeah, that's it. First pitching of the North End Vern 1 in a side-by-side -side comparison to the Hilleberg Sulo. Only because so many people out there to sensationalise their YouTube videos saying, 
oh, is the Hilleberg Sulo dead? Is this the new competitor? Blah, blah, blah. Um, well, until people have been up and tested it, nobody knows. You know, it could be. The very fact that it's only half the price, in my opinion, gives it a little bit of an edge. If it's as good as the Sulo at half the price, then in my mind, that's a better tent. You know, if it's slightly not as good at half the price, it could still be slightly the better tent. But we'll find out. As I say, I plan to use this more in the winter than the Sulo. The Sulo, only if I know the, the conditions are going to be really bad, but then once I've used this, I might change my mind. You know, this could be the me go-to tent. Um, they are heavy, as I say. That comes in about two. With the, with the ground sheet, I think it's about 2.6. This one with the ground sheet is 2.8, 2.9, something like that. Um, it's listed as 2.6 or 2.7 on the website. That, those numbers are always ambitious when they put them on there. I mean, they listed the original Vern one as 1.7, and it wasn't. It was more like 1.9. So... Always take that with a pinch of salt, uh, whatever the manufacturer says the, the actual weight is. Weight yourself. As, as I say, I know Andrew Park and uh, Felman Dave, they both weighed theirs, so they can tell you the exact figures of their ones. You can make it slightly lighter by taking certain things off. I mean, stuff you might not need. These little bungee ties to hold the, the guy lines. If you know how to roll up a guy line and tie it, they're not necessary, so you could take them off. They are a good idea, don't get us wrong. There's plenty of people out there that don't know how to roll up and tie a guy line so it stays in place. And for those people, convenience. It's, uh, I'm not judging you, I'm just saying I personally will take them off because I don't need them. Um, there's other bits and pieces as well. In terms of guy out with the Sulo, you've got two guy lines on each pole end, if you like. Um, I always bring them to meet together and peg them with one peg so uh, I believe it's 12 pegs you can put this out one on each apex and then two guy lines to one peg so you've got six and six 12 this one I believe is 16 pegs you've got the one on each apex so that's six two on each side ten um, the guy lines on the ends so another three another three on that end so that's 16, 17, 18, and two on the other side, 20, if you wanted to use every peg and point available here. You don't have to. Um, these midpoint ones you don't need to, so that would be 16. You don't need to peg the vents out necessarily. Um, it's entirely up to you. It depends on the conditions, but yeah, potentially 20 pegs with a Sulo. That wins on that one because it's only got 12. So I think the Sulo is. It's about, it takes about the same time to pitch in fairness because uh, this isn't complicated. You know, the long poles, as long as you go, they're, they're all colour coded, same as the Sulo is. So, you know, you can't really go wrong. But uh, it's a very nice looking tent and I'm looking forward to getting out and trying it. That's also a very nice looking tent and I have been out and tried that and I know what that's like. So, is it a competitor? Time will tell. Uh, on the face of it, could be, absolutely could be. Um, I hope it is. Uh, I think if it is, if, if it stands up to a few decent tests, because people will get it out and test it, um, I think they could be onto something there and have a, have a really big seller. And you might start seeing a lot of these on the market because if you can get something that's going to do the same job for half the price and the quality's good, why are you going to pay double? Unless it's just uh, because it is what it is, you know. I mean, that is a Rolls Royce of tents, to be fair. Well, the black label is anyway. That's probably more like, I don't know, high-end Audi or some shit like that. But yeah, so there it is. No 10 Vern 1. As I say, it's a very nice looking tent in all directions. If you put them um, sidewall guy outs in, I don't think you're going to have much movement at all. I mean, like I say, it's, the guy lines are not in, and that'll tension it up even more. I've literally just put the uh, apex pegs on. Same with the, the Sulo, and they're both moving about as much as each other. The wind's probably about... At the minute, it's probably only about nine mile an hour, eight mile an hour, something along there. It's supposed to pick up a bit later, but I want to get this done before that clag comes over and starts raining. So I'll get these packed away. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like that, then I'm going to get out this weekend. I'll do another video of it being used uh, and post that probably at the end of the weekend. But uh, yeah, like and subscribe and 
Thanks very much for watching.